What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be ranking my least favorite to favorite Hunter Hunter arcs. Okay, a lot of people on that video I made about it were really wanting to see this topic actually, which is really funny because I didn't really start doing these ranking type of videos until kind of recently and a lot of people have really been demanding those especially, so I guess I'll start doing those a lot more. And yeah, this one has to be the most in-demand one out of the non-One Piece anime, so... Let's just get right into this shit! Also keep in mind, I'm not completely caught up in the manga, and I think the majority of people who have seen Hunter x Hunter have probably only seen the anime, so it's probably better this way anyway. So, starting at number 7 on my list, the election arc. I doubt anyone would be surprised by this, right? I mean, out of the 7 that are in the anime, not in the manga so far, this definitely has to be the worst one, right? I don't think it was even supposed to be particularly exciting, it was probably, I'm guessing, for the sake of just progressing the plot. Yes, I'm guessing that, well, we get to see Jing, so that's important, and maybe Periston are going to play some huge role in the series later. I think that that's why that was important, and we got to meet the rest of the Zodiacs. I know that they are kind of having something to do with the Dark Continent arc, right, because, like... That's pretty much all we've seen. We haven't seen any of the main characters except for them in, like, the three or four chapters that I've read. So, yeah, I mean, that arc was alright. Like, I, I won't say that it wasn't entertaining because it was fine. We got to see a lot out of Jing, and Periston seemed like a n cool, interesting kind of guy. I'd like to see more out of him, but it just wasn't that exciting, especially compared to the rest of this series. So that's why it's at the bottom of my list. And at number 6, I have the Zoldic family arc. This one wasn't as bad as the election arc. The election arc wasn't bad, but just boring, I should say. But it wasn't anything too exciting. I think it actually could have been a lot more so. I, I mean, I shouldn't say it could have because it was written pretty much as well as it could. I just kind of had a little bit higher of expectations because we were in the Zoldic mansion, right? I mean, we got to see pretty much all of them, the, for the most part. We, did, I guess we didn't get to see all of them, but we got to see Kilawa's dad, his mom, we'd already seen his brother, we got to see his other brother, his, I guess, not sister, I guess Kaluto's his brother, I'm not really sure what that's all about, but whatever. It was pretty cool to see all of them. I wish we would have actually gotten to see some, you know, abilities from them, see what they were actually capable of at that point. I also really liked the butler, right? He, he was an awesome character. I liked the way that he pr tried to protect Kilo. Obviously, he was misguided, and I was really worried for them in that situation. It wasn't looking good, but uh, Gon was able to get through his test with the coins, and Kilo showed up there in time. I honestly wish that Kilo would have, like, scolded him a little bit more, but, you know, what are you gonna do? It was an alright arc. We got to see some cool things with them getting a lot physically stronger, being able to push open the testing gate. But besides that kind of cool stuff in the beginning and the butler at the end, really, I wasn't really that entertained. Of course I was, you know, just as watching any anime or whatnot, because Hunter x Hunter's fucking insane. But in terms of Hunter x Hunter, it was pretty boring compared to the rest, so that's why it's at number six here. All right, and coming in at number five, I have the Hunter exam arc. I thought this was a great arc, a great way to open up the series. I was excited pretty much the entire time throughout, and it wasn't even that long. It was pretty short, got through it very quickly. Almost every single episode was very exciting. I mean, even the first, like, four episodes where they weren't even really at the exam. I was very entertained. I enjoyed all the characters up until that point. And Kilo wasn't even introduced, who is my favorite character of the series. So, I think that goes to show how good it really was at the beginning. And throughout, it was fantastic. Again, like I said, every single episode was good. We didn't really understand how a lot of stuff was working with the higher level people like Hisoka and whatnot because we didn't know what Nen was at the time, but it was very cool to see at the least it kind of made sense at least for him since he was supposed to be a magician, right? So everything seemed kind of magical. It was cool how we got to see what this world was going to be like to an extent, the kind of power levels that we could uh, expect in the future, I suppose. I mean, yeah, with the with how it ended and everything, all the cool characters we got to see, I just loved it as an arc. And coming in at number four, and people might be a little bit upset that I put this over the Hunter exam, but I liked it a lot, the Heaven's Arena arc, right? This is what takes place immediately after the Hunter exam. Kilo was a part of it the entire time, and really, I would say, and I would be surprised if anyone really disagreed with me, I would say he played an equally important role as Gon here. I mean, he does through a lot of the story, really. Gon technically is, like, the main protagonist, but Kilua is always right there. The, the only thing really different is that what Gon does influences Kilua more than the other way around, so I think that's what really makes Gon the main character. 
But yeah, we get to see a lot of Kilo here. We get to see him be a complete animal. Gon really catches up to him to an extent, right? I mean, he showed that he has a lot of physical strength, of course. He's not quite as fast or whatnot as Kilo. He doesn't get to use these weird special abilities that Kilo learned by being an assassin. But then... The most important part of this arc is that they get to learn Nen for the first time. The power system of Hunter x Hunter, which I made a video all about explaining why I think it is the best power system in the entire Shonen anime collection I've seen so far. I, I would be surprised if there's a better one than this. I've heard like JoJo's is a lot better, but whatever. You know, I think this one is absolutely fantastic. I loved every second learning about Nen. I really think it's just perfect. It's a fantastic system. It was a great way that they introduced it into the series. I liked how Gon and Kilo were able to pick it up relatively quickly, and just based on how it works, you don't necessarily need to be just like brute force, you know, completely overpowered in order to use it. You can be very smart about it, and that's what they were able to do. That's why they were able to overcome their opponents in the Heavens Arena arc, and that's why I liked it so much. I thought that the Nen was a huge factor. I liked a lot of the Kilua action, and overall, it was just awesome. And coming in at number three, I have the Greed Island arc, and this one is a tricky one. It's really weird for me. I always have it switching with Heaven's Arena and itself, always going from fourth and third like that, because something weird about it is that it really doesn't, in my opinion, have that strong of a cast, right? Besides Bisky being added, I didn't really enjoy any of the other characters. I mean, Razor was cool, but he was kind of an antagonist anyway. Well, I guess that doesn't matter. Antagonists are extremely important. My favorite character in One Piece is Dofi, right? So, yeah, I shouldn't say that. But Razor wasn't that important for the majority of it. He was just there a little bit. The main antagonist was Genthru, right? And he was all right, I guess. I liked at the end how he acted after they had defeated him. I liked how he wanted to save his friends instead of himself. That was very cool. I did enjoy that a lot. But up until that point, it was kind of weird, right? I didn't like him so much as a character. What I did like about this arc so much, though, is just what was going on in it outside of the characters, right? Just the idea that they were in this game. You know, I love video games, and this was a really cool game that Togashi came up with. I, I thought it was very cool how, you know, if they were sent into, a, like, virtual... It wasn't virtual reality, but that's kind of what they thought. If it was, like, a virtual reality game, different cool ideas they could use in a world like that and it was very neat to see all these quests that they got to do they got to collect all these items and there could only be one winner it was just this grand like it was kind of like a battle royale except well i guess you could die but no one ever really died for the most part definitely none of the main characters but yeah it was just kind of this like free for all you could team up with people you got to complete this book with all these cards it was very cool to see what these cards can do and then at the end, they even got to take, what was it, three cards? I believe they got to take three cards back with them, and that was super cool. They each picked one because there were three of them, right? And the coolest thing, the thing that I thought was awesome at the end of this arc is not just the cool idea that Gon and Kilua had on what cards they should take so that they could, you know, bring a card that wasn't allowed outside, and Jing even had that plan for him, right? He figured that Gon would figure that out. But they had it set up, Jing had it set up so that, you know, he figured there's two different ways that Gon could see this. Gon was taking out a card so that it could teleport him to Jing, because they knew that Jing was a player in this game at some point. However, Jing made it so there's, there's two different teleport cards. One where you teleport yourself, and one where you teleport you and all your friends around you, or whatever. However many people are around you, whatever you want to come with you. And so he made it so that if... Gon used the card. If Gon took the card out of the game that allowed him to travel with people, then it would not go to Jing, it would go to his friend Kite, right? But if he decided to come by himself, then he would allow it to go to Jing. Because Jing is just, you know, kind of a weird guy. He didn't want to meet any unnecessary people. He said Gon had to be a man and face him himself if he wanted to. I, I, don't, I don't really understand the logic there, but I guess that's Jing for you, right? Jing's a really cool character. I thought that was awesome how that all ended. It was great, and it led into a pretty fantastic arc as well. So, that's why Greed Island is definitely up there for me. The characters weren't quite as strong as a lot of other arcs, but, I mean, come on. Just the whole arc itself, what was going on in the environment, was fucking awesome. So, that's why it's a number three for me. And coming in at number two is the York New Arc. And it, with the time I was watching it, you know, the first time around, it was hard for me to believe this wasn't going to be my favorite arc, okay? I mean, 
what the pretty much the main antagonist of it were the phantom troop and the phantom troop is everything i love right they're like these dark mysterious guys they're all like super overpowered with different types of abilities that don't make any sense we have no idea how they work we had just been introduced to nan and then we learn all about them and they're using all these ridiculous nan abilities it was so awesome I mean, they really gave me this, like, Akatsuki vibe, right, like, from Naruto, just like the Akatsuki, just all these, like, super overpowered, ridiculous people with completely different abilities than each other. I, I mean, just one person from it was enough to take down so many people. Uvo, right? Uvo Gen, I believe, was his full name. He was able to take down pretty much, what was it, half of the Shadow Beast by himself, and he would have been fine if he didn't you know, kind of get trapped by Kurapika. So, yeah, I mean, they're completely overpowered. They seem to have interesting personalities. I like the way they interact with each other. The Phantom Troop was awesome. And that wasn't even all, right? We got to see a lot of Kurapika, the way that he was able to use Nen. He was a specialist because he was a Kurta. That was super cool. I really liked the way that he used his abilities. I like how he made himself extra powerful, specifically when facing off against spiders, because, I mean right? That's his entire goal. I like how he sacrificed a lot of ability for that, because that just shows the kind of conviction that he has. Of course, that's not necessarily such a good thing. Maybe, you know, he'd be a better person if that wasn't the case, but either way, I respect that he has conviction. Unfortunately, Gon Kilua, even Leorio, didn't really have that many huge parts in this. I mean, they, they were, of course, extremely important, but I, I wouldn't say they were the highlight in any way, shape, or form. They were not what was responsible for the most exciting parts. Again, I really think it came down mainly to Kurapika and the Phantom Troop, and I couldn't get enough of any of them. I thought Krolo was awesome. I liked how Hisoka was a part of it. I really like Machi as a character. I like Paku. I uh, like, what's the guy who punches? He has like blonde hair. I don't remember his name. I cannot remember his name, but he's awesome. Pretty much all oh, Tan. I mean, come on. They're all so awesome. I love the Phantom Troop. I cannot wait to see more of them if I continue in the manga. And yeah, I definitely had to put York New at number two. Although I will say that the next one, without a doubt, takes the number one spot. I don't go back and forth on this one. Coming in at the number one spot, my favorite arc of the series, one of my favorite arc in anime history, really, is the Chimera Ant arc, of course. You all probably knew that was coming as soon as York New was number two. Well, I guess it also was the only one left, but that's not the point. I, I think most people could have assumed I would pick this if not York New. I think those are always the two big ones. I mean, I don't really think I have to say much about the Chimera Ant arc, right? So many people would agree with me on this, if not York knew. It was just awesome. All the cool abilities we got to see, the way these Chimera Ants worked was very cool. Every single one of the Royal Guards I absolutely loved. Pito was definitely my favorite by far, but the other two I liked a lot. I mean, Poof I probably liked the least, but he I understood his character very well. I really, I, I liked how he was implemented in the story a ton, right? Yuppie was really cool too. I really enjoyed how he developed that like sense of honor against Knuckle. And speaking of Knuckle, another great character, right? All the new characters we were introduced to were awesome. Knuckle, Shoot, Morel, the other, the Nove, I think his name, I don't really know how to pronounce it, Nove, I believe is his name, but, you know, he, he was cool. Unfortunately, he was taken out pretty early, but, you know, that that's all right. Gon and Kilua became super powerful by this point in the story. I mean, Kilua had to godspeed, right? He was straight up taking on Yuppie while he was pissed off. That was awesome to see. The way that Meruem's character went from, you know, just the terrible, like, pretty much like Dofi as a child kind of kid, you know, right? Just complete asshole, thinks he's the king, everyone else doesn't matter, even his closest people like the Royal Guards. He even tried killing Pito at one point. And then when he wasn't able to one-shot her, he said that she gained his respect. That was, that was quite interesting. But, I mean, the way that he transformed his character was just absolutely unbelievable i mean seriously the way that komugi was able to do this to him i just i loved it it seemed so realistic this was not like any talk no jutsu shit from naruto it wasn't a complete ass pole it was a very slow moving process and it made complete sense to me I, I just, I loved it. He turned into a human. The way that he faced off against Netro, the battle itself, it, it was so awesome, all of it. And what is really crazy is, with everything that Marum did, his entire character shift, everything about him, that was not even my favorite part of the entire arc. My favorite part of the arc, without a doubt, was the interactions between Gon and Pito. Most importantly, the part where they're sitting in the tower while Pito is healing Komugi. Of course, it was cool when Gon went ape shit and killed Pito and whatnot, but no. When they were talking in the tower, 
both of those characters I just could not get enough of, right? Gon pretty much just became this evil monster who wanted nothing but revenge, which is, it seems so out of character for him throughout the entire story, but it actually makes sense. If you, I, I've seen it two times now, and it really makes perfect sense to me how this happened. I, it, he was just like a dark monster who could not think of anything but killing Pito, but at the same time, she is healing this just whoever, you know, this just random girl who they were responsible for injuring, which just, he cannot handle. He's like losing his mind. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do here? Why can I not kill this person? This, I mean, it's not really a person, aunt, right? Why can I not kill this aunt after everything she did? Why the hell is Pito healing Komugi? I don't understand. He could not process this information. And then even better, I think I like Pito even more as a character than Gon, honestly. The way that she was acting here, the way that she realized that this person was an important person to Meru, a completely different way of looking at it from the other two royal guards. She understood that having Komugi alive would make Meruem happy. She seemed to me to even realize that, like, Meruem had become more of a complete being, right? He was like on a different level of happiness than he was capable of attaining up until this point. And she realized, she just like, her cat motherly instincts kicked in and realized that she had to protect Komugi at all costs. No matter what was going on, she was willing to break one of her arms. She even said she would break the other. I think she even might have offered to break her legs too, right? She would have broken, broken any bones she possibly could have to prevent Gon from killing Komugi and herself. And... Damn, I mean, it worked, right? She ended up tricking Gon, was gonna kill him, and then he just went fucking ballistic, and that's pretty much how the arc ended. So, yeah, I, I think I can say without a doubt, based on my particular taste in stories and literature and whatnot, the Chimera Ant arc was exactly what I wanted. So, uh, yeah, that's my list. Uh, there's only seven arcs, right, that aren't in the manga yet, so, uh, mm hmm that's pretty much what I could do for you. I hope I didn't piss anyone off. I think this was actually a pretty reasonable list. A lot of the time I do stuff that a lot of people disagree with for whatever reason, but I think this is pretty decent. I think the biggest thing I'm going to get shit for is the Hunter Exam arc. I think that a lot of people would put that at maybe number three. I don't know. I, I, I thought it was fantastic, I just, I liked the other two more, so, yep, that's what I got for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Remember to leave me a comment letting me know what you thought about this video if you enjoyed it. If you did not, let me see your list. What is your list of the arcs in order? Maybe you have an additional arc, like you think I missed an arc, like a sub arc or something, you know, like that. Let me know what you guys think, give me your order, I would love to see them. I hope this video was a good start to your weekend, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll talk to you guys on Sunday.